I came to tell you of a story about a king who went back to glory. It happened a long time ago. I just feel everybody ought to know. They took him to Pilate's Hall. He stood there humble and tall. Pilate said, in this man I find no fault, but still they led him to the cross. They pierced him in his side and told many people cried. But on that the day he arose, now he lives forever in my soul. Jesus purchased my salvation way back on Calvary's tree conquered sin death and the grave just because because he loved me Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Of you. And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. Those, so those who went departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, the owner asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on it, on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with loud voices for all deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, Order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if they went silent, the stones would shout the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King. Upon the lips of children, make sweet Hosanna's ring. Thou art the King of Israel, of David's royal son, who in the Lord's name comest, the King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may sweet Rosanna's ring. But is that set their praises, accept the prayers we bring, who in all good delight has thou good and gracious King. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 31, and let's read it uh, responsively by the whole verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, 
a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around me. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of mine enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and your loving kindness to save me. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be explained, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a green hill far away outside a city wall where our dear Lord was crucified who died to save us all. Oh, dearly, dearly has he loved and we must love him too, and trust in his redeeming blood, and try his work to do. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to St. Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betrayed Jesus to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into this city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. 
Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters before me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas one of the twelve, arrived with him, was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which should say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to ask me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said,
this fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is that, to, what is that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you on oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witness? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. Then he went out to the porch. Another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What What is is that that to us? us? See See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into a treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to go ask for Barabbas and have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, 
Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, Blood 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 be on on us and our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking them, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then he led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Serene called Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watching over him. Over his head, they put a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the crown, from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lemma sabatani. That is. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tomb also were opened and many bodies of the saints who were fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to men. Now when the centurion and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Surely this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Jesus took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. 
Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to him, You have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. That was absolutely beautiful. Uh, youth of San Diego and Charlotte, thank you for that. Reflecting on this time and hearing the passion uh, rings even louder than normal. My thoughts before hearing it this day was that we're confronted with this COVID-19 and I have found myself in a very different and awkward place. It was certainly easier for me to envision what was going on in the life of Jesus. The Romans out to get him, the Gentiles along with the Pharisees convinced that Jesus was a threat and they were constantly scheming. We find ourselves constantly praying and hoping that an answer comes through, but we shan't forget that Jesus will rise again. As we know, Jesus turned to prayer, and as we continue to raise our voices for the appreciation of what we have and hope that soon the pandemic for what will come under control, let that be our wilderness prayer. Thanks to Father Michael, he has graciously become my sensei during this difficult time, trying to help me learn how to use my computer for more than email without the fear that I, will, that I normally have because I'm going to mess something up. I must admit that after each session, I find myself looking for my own Garden of Gethsemane. I found that there I am able to to meditate and find God. Friends, this allows my anxiety to come down and my thoughts about how we will use this technology now and in the future to better serve the children of God. Avis Crow wrote, to be less fearful of the measure of time and more fully alive in the time that simply is. Help me to live time, not just to simply use it, to breathe it in and return it in acts of love and presence. As we prepare for Holy Week, let us take the measure of time to be with our Lord as he prepared for the great. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tom and, and Michael and Charlotte and Mary for your gift of grace to us this day. Uh, certainly, this has to be the strangest Holy Week that we've ever encountered in our lives. Uh, I know I'm speaking for myself. Fifty-three years ago, I attended my first church service. I'd never been to church before that day. 53 years ago today on a Palm Sunday, and I remember hearing the Passion Gospel read just as it was so beautifully read this morning by our young people across the Diocese of San Diego. That week of my life really changed who I am today, who I would become. My priorities were changed instantly. It was an amazing week of intense preparation and prayer. And I remember how God met me at the point of my need. And so today on this Palm Sunday, we enter the final chapter of the story of Lent, which I have appropriately entitled an invitation to Holy Week. The story of Holy Week that we begin to hear today begins with our soar, our spirits soaring and yet ends in somber reflection. I wonder where we would find ourselves in this story, each of us individually, collectively. 
I wonder if we would be like the disciples who deliver an unbroken donkey, one that after an encounter with Jesus walks sedately through a noisy parade. Perhaps we might see ourselves in Peter's declaration of loyalty gone awry and self-preservation. Or in Pilate, who gives in to what is expedient instead of what is just. Or in the despair of Judas, who believes himself unforgivable. Do we see ourselves in the powerful, in the religious leaders who sought to control and eliminate a perceived threat? Have some of us known the shock of Barabbas, having come so close in being condemned to death, only to experience the miracle of new life in a sudden and swift reversal of grace? Have we known the surprise of Simon, who later came to understand that in the paradox of servanthood, we see the very face of God who suffers with us. Will you and I stand in awe together with the centurion who senses a profound holiness in the mystery of Jesus' death? Have you and I known the courage of Joseph of Arimathea who made a bold request to have the body of Jesus buried in a tomb. You see the purpose of Palm Sunday and the invitation it opens for us into Holy Week is one of, of connection and imagination. We enter into this story of Jesus' suffering because it is God's story and it's our story. Walking into the shared experiences of Holy Week you and I are invited to hear this story for each of ourselves. We learn that Jesus suffers so that when we are suffering, we know that God understands and cares for us. We see in the story that Jesus is utterly alone by the end of the story. And so it is we learn that when we feel alone, we know God understands and is with us always. Jesus cries out in despair so that when we become convinced the whole world has conspired against us and we feel ready to give up, we know that God understands and holds on to us. And when we see that Jesus dies, we know that God understands death and the, and the fear of death. And he reminds us that death does not have the last word. All that we see, my brothers and sisters, all that we hear, all that we read and sing together this day and this week, all of this, all of it is for us. Remember that this chapter begins today and continues on until we gather next Sunday at the empty tomb. May God's presence be real in your life this day as never before. May you sense his mighty presence flowing through you in ways you never imagined. May God's amazing grace and love touch you at the point of your need this day. May it ripple through your body, your spirit, and touch the world around you, even though you're six feet apart from everybody that you care and love in this world. May God's amazing grace sustain us this day and evermore. We pray all of this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people. To all God's children, he leads us through pain and death always with the promise of hope and life. As we make our journey to the Paschal Feast, let us earnestly pray to God for all the world whom God sent his son to save. For the church throughout the world, sharing the death and resurrection of Christ. Lord, have mercy. 
for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan, our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially Donald, our president, Gavin, our governor, and Richard, our mayor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord, for a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present, and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Lord God, you have taught us that anything we do without love is worth nothing. For whoever lives without love is counted dead before you. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us join together in our prayer for our rector search. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for Christ Church that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen, King Jesus. No man can hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus, ride on. No man can hinder me. For he is King of kings, he is Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last, no man works like him, for he is King of kings, he is Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last, no man works like him. King Jesus rides a milk-white horse, no man works like him. The river of Jordan he did cross, no man works like him, for he is King of kings. Lord of lords, O oh, Jesus Christ, the first and last, no man works like him. King Jesus rides in the middle of the air, no man works like him, oh, he calls the saints from everywhere. Ah, right on, King Jesus, no man can hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus, ride on, no man can hinder me. He is the King, he is the Lord, oh, yes, he is the King, he is the Lord, oh, Jesus Christ. The first and the last, no man works like him. Right on, right on, right on, right on, Jesus. Michael, thank you. Let us pray for the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this time to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separate from you. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Such a joy to welcome you all this Palm Sunday, the year 2020. Pray the Lord is very near to you in this time of our lives, a time of uncertainty, but also a time of certainty. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. So we gather today on this Palm Sunday, praising God, thanking the Lord for his love of us and his love of all of creation. And so we have a few announcements for you in this new venue of worship. And uh, 
I know we usually have quite a celebration of the peace at Christ Church when we're there together, so much so that we almost need to bring a picnic lunch because it lasts so long. Well, we can't do that today, but we can certainly greet one another in the name of Christ virtually. And I'm going to ask uh, Charlotte to give us a few announcements to guide us into the next week. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to Father Michael, Deacon Tom, Michael, and Mary for being part of this this morning. I'm so grateful to see the faces. Um, I miss all of the faces, as I know that you guys do, too. A couple of things of note for this coming week. Past, this past week in your e-communicator when it came out, there was a survey about how we can be together virtually. Uh, it includes offerings that we already have out and ideas for other th opportunities to get together. Would you please take a few minutes and complete that survey? Let us know how we can reach and serve and be with you um, in this time when we can't be together physically. Also, if you have interest in being in any of the online worship services this week, if you go to www.christchurchcoronado.org, you'll see a featured article, and I believe the title of it is All the Neat Links You Need. <laughs> and if you click on that article, it is broken up by day of the week, Sunday worship, Sunday coffee hour, which I'll talk about in a minute, Monday worship, Tuesday, Monday Bible study, Tuesday worship, Wednesday Compline, Thursday healing service. And they're all wonderful opportunities for you to connect and be with us live on Zoom, see the faces of the people you love most. Circling back to what's coming right after this is this week we have decided that we should have coffee and donuts together. Now you need to bring both of them yourself and come to Zoom. But right after this service, if you go to the website, you will see that there's a link right there that will bring you to that opportunity for fellowship and connection with the rest of your Christchurch family. And I really hope you'll take that moment to come and say hello. Right. Eternal Lord, have love behold your church. Moved by your love and toward your presence bent, of your tear, of all desire, so daily dying to so daily living to your way of love, we walk the road, Lord Jesus, that you trod, knowing ourselves baptized into your death of your tear and live with you in God. If that in you, so in you we are you the firstborn of all the faithful dead, and as through stony ground the green shoots break, glorious in springtime, Dress of leaf and flower, so in the Father's glory, 
Friends, let us be well and go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.